Jesus is the highest name that has been given. And we welcome you to another episode of Just Like Him. We believe that today, even as we're singing about this song, the name of Jesus, that you know, sickness and disease will begin to leave and right. uh, you start having you know, peace of mind in your life because all that can be found in that name of Jesus. Amen. The name of Jesus is very powerful. 
There's deliverance in that name. There's forgiveness in that name. There's provision in that name. Protection in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is very powerful. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible in Philippians 2 that says, Philippians 2, 9, and I'll read from verse 9 to 11. It says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The name of Jesus is very powerful. It is, it is powerful. There's salvation in the name there of is. Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There is a deliverance in that name. Mm. And all kinds of good things that you need in life is found yeah. in that name of Jesus. Mm. You know, Jesus Christ, when He came to this earth, He, he was going about doing so many good things. He yeah. was uh, actually, if you go to see, Jesus was bringing life to people. Mm. He was bringing hope to hopeless situations. That's right. And He was bringing healing to a lot of people. That's why people love to hang around Jesus. Mm. When you read the Gospels, you see how much people love hanging around Jesus. Yeah. I mean, they'd somehow come and somehow press through even if there were crowds and receive from the good things that he had. That's right. And because there is so much of life in that name of Jesus. Yeah. So that's one good thing that you can know about the name yeah. of Jesus. Thankful for the name of Jesus. So as we're talking about the name of Jesus, I'm reminded of that scripture in Isaiah chapter 9 where it talks about the name of Jesus and the birth of our Savior. In Isaiah 9, 6 it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That is powerful. Mm. The name of Jesus is wonderful. There is wonder-working power in the name of Jesus. It's a wonderful name. His name shall be called Counselor. Do you need counsel and guidance in your life today? There is counsel in the name of Jesus. When you run to the Savior and you say, Lord, guide me, lead me, give me counsel. I need direction in the steps that I'm about to take. He's your counselor. He is the mighty God, the all-powerful God, the everlasting Father. I love that. In the name of Jesus, it says He is everlasting Father. Mm. If you have not experienced the love of a Father today, you can experience it in Jesus Christ. Right. He is our everlasting Father. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never give up on you and He will never let you down. He is always going to be your everlasting Father. That's right. And it says He's the Prince of Peace. Mm. We cannot find peace any other way other than in Jesus. That's right. What a wonderful what name. What a wonderful name. And another amazing thing about that name of Jesus is that we see that we have power and authority through that name. Yeah. You know, we've been talking about faith and how faith, you know, when you use the faith of God, you are able to speak to mountains. Like that, is, that is referring to hindrances in your life and they will be moved. But the other amazing thing about faith is that um, in this faith that we've received and the name of Jesus, we have power and authority over all the power of the enemy. Right. You know, some of the things that the enemy does in this world is he's the one who brings sickness and he's the author of you know, confusion and mm. strife and division and mm. all those things. And we see actually when Jesus came, he was operating in a very powerful authority, right? You know, demons were afraid of that name of Jesus. They, when they when they knew they knew Jesus they would just tremble yeah right they would they would have to leave people that's right and you know the amazing thing is you have the same authority not only did Jesus mm. have it I mean when he was on this earth but he also promised us that we can have the same power and authority Amen. right and that's very clear here in this uh, scripture that we we'll go song to that we were also seeing it says there's deliverance in the name of Jesus mm. under whatever oppression you may be in Jesus Christ can set you free. Yeah. Jesus talked about all the, the disciples when they were sent on an assignment um, that Jesus had given them. They came back and they told Jesus, Lord, the demons are subject unto the name of Jesus. Mm. Whatever bondage you may be in, whatever it may be, whether, whether sickness or some kind of a depression or oppression or fear, spirit of fear, those demon spirits have to be subject unto the name of Jesus. That's There's right. deliverance 
in the name of Jesus. That's right. Luke 10, 19, Jesus tells us, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So God wants you to know today that you have power over the enemy. Talking about the name of Jesus and the power and authority that we have received through this name. Mm. So going into Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Jesus tells us that we have power over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Right. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. You have authority in that name. Mm. You know, the enemy, like we said earlier, he is the author of all sickness and disease. God mm. is not. God has no sickness and disease to offer. Yeah. I mean, he, he brought Jesus to set us free from sickness and disease. So why yeah. would he want to give it to us? The Bible says that he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and he went around doing good mm. and healing all that were oppressed to the devil. You see, the devil was the one who was putting all the evil oppression and sickness and disease and troubles on people and, and putting them in bondage. Mm -hmm. But it was Jesus who was going around doing good and healing all the people who were oppressed to the devil. Yeah. You can read that scripture in Acts and get set free. If you think that all the bad things you know in my life are coming because of, of God, because maybe God hates me or you know maybe I'm not being a good person, so I'm mm -hmm. getting all these evil things by God. But no, be set free today. It's not God who is doing evil to you. Jesus went around doing good. Mm. In the New Testament, if you read in the Gospels, you will find that Jesus went around doing good and he went around healing all that were oppressed to the devil for God was with him. That's right. Everything about God is that he is good. Mm. He is perfect and he is good. Yeah. And like we were reading in Luke 10, 19, you may say, well, what does this power and authority really mean? Mm. What does it mean? What do I need to do with this authority? Well, let's go back to some of the beginnings that happened to us. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians 1.13 that we've been delivered from the power of darkness into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Mm. You know, that happens when you, when you say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Immediately what happens, I mean, you don't have to see this, but what happens is God says that you get transferred out of the power of darkness, which is the kingdom of the enemy, mm -hmm. into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And when you come into that new kingdom, you receive, first of all, you become a son of God. Yeah. That's one blessing. Mm. But the second thing is you also receive this power and authority. Mm. You, you could kind of say you become a powerful person. That's right. You so the greater one is living on the inside of you. Yeah. In 1 John 4, it says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Mm. So that means you have more power over all the power of the enemy, yeah. like the scripture says in Luke 10, 19. The greater one is living on the inside of you. You see, if you see the life of Jesus, he went around teaching and healing people with power and authority. Yeah, he wasn't a weak man. No, he wasn't. He was demonstrating the power of God. In fact, that is how initially we were created to be. If you see in Genesis 1, it talks about how God created man and he gave him dominion. He gave him power and authority over mm. all the uh, creatures of the earth and over all the, the things in the earth. We have been given power and authority. But yeah. that power and authority was lost when Adam and Eve made a mistake and they disobeyed God. And so Satan became, uh, overpowered them mm. in a sense. That's why God had to send Jesus back to earth in the form of man. He was God himself, but he also came as a man to die on the cross and to take away the sin of man mm. and also to restore this power and authority that we once had. Mm. Yeah, like we said, you know how Jesus, he was very firm against sickness and he disease. Mm. Right? He didn't tolerate it. You know, no. If you see the way he spoke to sickness and disease, he commanded it. He'd say, come out of that man yeah. or come out, you know, sickness mm -hmm. and disease. He was very firm. Yes. And you know what? You have that same power and authority that right. Jesus had. When you become a mm. child of God and you become born again, you get this power and authority to stand against sickness and disease. Yeah. And uh, like there's one example in the Bible where um, it says Jesus was rebuking, he, he rebuked the fever, mm. right? You know, he didn't just tolerate it, he rebuked it. And he commanded that fever. I think there's a scripture there. We have the scripture I want to uh, read on. He yeah, that was fever. in, I think, Mark yeah. or somewhere. Anyway, the backstory of that is that Jesus, he came into Peter's house. Peter was one of the disciples of Jesus. And he came and Peter's mother, mother-in-law was sick at mm. this time. And so she had fever. 
And immediately when Jesus saw her, it says he rebuked the fever yeah. and the fever left her and she served them. So Jesus didn't just tolerate sickness and disease and just think, oh, well, maybe this is God's will. You have to suffer like that and live with that forever. Mm. He rebuked. He used his power and authority and commanded sickness and disease to leave people's bodies. Yeah. And they were set free. They were set free. You know, there's, a, there's another story we're going to see of a, of a man who actually understood what power and authority is. Mm. He really understood it. And Jesus was really amazed at this man. Let's uh, see that scripture in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. Yeah. We're talking about how when you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have received power and authority mm. over all the power of the enemy. That's right. And we're going to see an example in the book of Matthew chapter 8. Mm. Now the story is where there was a centurion who came to Jesus and he had a very sick servant. And he loved this servant very much. And um, in Matthew 8, 7, you know, Jesus tells his men, I will come and heal him. You know, Jesus was always ready to heal anybody. That's right. He was always willing. Hmm. Now, the centurion answered Jesus very differently compared to the other people. Right? This is what he said in Matthew 8, 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. And then verse 9, he says, For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goes. And to another, Come, and he comes. And my servant, Do this, and he does it. Hmm. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said, I have not found so great faith, not in Israel. Yes. And if you go down and see, verse 13, Jesus tells this man, Go your way, as you mm. have believed, so it be done unto you. Yeah. Now let's go a little bit slowly and talk about what was it that Jesus admired about this man? What was it that caused Jesus to say you have such great faith? Well, let's go into verse 8 and read the last part again. Um, Jesus, This man tells Jesus, Speak the word only mm. and my servant shall be healed. Isn't that amazing? That's Speak amazing. the word only and my servant shall be healed. Yeah. You know, Jesus could have come and laid hands on his servant. But rather, this man was, he was more, um, he was more be into believing Jesus authority. at that moment, speaking the word. Mm. He just believed in the power and authority that was spoken right at that very moment. Mm. And um, It says he understood yeah. about this power and authority because he was also in such a position. Mm. He had servants under him and he was also a servant to people who were over him. Yeah. He was a centurion. And so he understood, if, I, if you just command my servant to be healed, you just speak the word. He shall be healed. I'm not going to have to see signs and wonders to believe that he'll be healed. Or I don't mm. have to see the physical manifestation of the healing to believe. Yeah. That's why Jesus t um, told the centurion, you have great faith. I have not seen, um, he says, I have not found great faith at all in, in Israel. Because, because he just... He just believed in the power of the spoken word. Mm. If the word is just spoken, Lord, you just say the word right where you are. You don't even have to come. Yeah. Just speak the word, my servant will be healed. That's right. In other words, he operated on the highest form of faith, believing what Jesus spoke mm. without even yet seeing. Yeah. That's why Jesus called it great faith. When, when he said great faith, he didn't mean, you know, this faith is only for special people or for certain important people mm. or because, you know, you've been in the faith for a long time. What he meant by great faith was you believed without even seeing yet mm. the physical manifestation. Yeah. And that's how we should be. You just believe, believe the power of the spoken word that right. is spoken unto you. How do you apply this story into your life? You may mm. say, how do I apply this great faith to my life? Okay, so the Bible tells you that by Jesus' stripes you are healed. So what you do is you say, okay, Father, I believe that you said according to your word that you took my sickness, you took my disease on the cross. And so I believe and I thank you that by your stripes I'm already healed. Yes. That's great faith. Great Instead faith. of the opposite is saying, Lord, if I just can feel that I'm healed, if I can mm. just feel that something has happened to me, that's not great faith at all. Mm. Right? That's, that's sort of little faith, I would say. Right? Mm. Like where Jesus also described it as that. But great faith is where you can say, Father, I believe that you have given me power and authority over sickness and disease. So I speak to my sickness and I speak and I command it to leave in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus. Yeah. And the sickness should leave. Well, you don't have to worry about when it leaves. 
Well, when you speak it, it should already be, yeah. you should all believe it's already done by mm. faith. And so today, believe that when you have received Jesus Christ into your life, right. you have become a really powerful person. Amen. It's not your own power, but it's the greater one living on the inside of you. And you can use this power and authority over all sickness and disease, or bad habits and addictions, and, and they have to leave at the name of Jesus. So praise God, be set free this day, because you have power and authority in the name of Jesus.